18 years ago, Sir Henry Cecil was crowned champion trainer for a tenth time. Now the master of Warren Place is teetering on an eleventh title. It's just one history-making afternoon that will decide his destiny. Sir Henry, it's Champions Day, but hopefully Champions Day can create a champion once again. Uh, 18 years after you were the champion trainer, you got a real chance to do it once again. Well, I, I don't think so. I think it's a very outside chance. It's a sort of, it's very, very slight. Almost impossible, isn't it? But it's not almost impossible. If Frankel were to win the QE2 and then twice over a midday perform to their best in the champion stakes, you're in the lead as far as the Champions trainer competition is going. No, but if you take the stable, my two year olds, which is about half the yard, are very backward. They're not being much help to me this year. I like some of them. Might be all right next year, but this year there would be no help. Um, my three year olds on the whole have been moderate, apart from Frankel. Um, I'm rather relying on three or four horses, you know. I mean, uh, Richard you know, he has a lot of runners and, and winners, and um, he's got the sales races coming up. So I think my, my chances of being champ trainer you know, of practically nil. You know, I think it'd be I'd be a hundred to one. I, I know the bookmakers say what did they say nine to? You're about eleven to four. I think, eleven to four. I'd say hundred to one. I, I'm not expecting to. I, I should be thrilled if I finish in the top top three. And I imagine that's why the bookmakers would say you're, you've been a ten times champion trainer and they're bookmakers. But on on that score, Sir Henry, I mean. If you think back to 1993, which is when you were last champion trainer, everything that's happened in your life since then, the, the good and the bad, mm. it would be amazing to do it. So would, far would, but I mean, you've got to, you know, I've got to win uh, the Queen, Liz uh, Queen Elizabeth. I've got to probably be first and second in the champion stakes. I've probably got to win the, uh, the, the mayor's race, Phillies and mayor's race. Um, well, you know, it's, it's, it's all, it's, you know, one doesn't expect to do that. Yeah. You can't expect it, but, but you can certainly hope. And, and on a personal well, we hope, we hope, but yeah. I, you, know, you know, I'd be very, very lucky if that happened, wouldn't I? I mean, what would it mean to you if you did it? No, it'd be pleasing, but then I still, you know, Rick Richard's got sales races and things coming up and doing, and I don't, um, I don't expect to beat him. Richard Hannon, your yeah. big rival. It's nice to be up there playing with the, the no, top it's, end. No, it's nice to, you know, to, if we could finish on, on, on a good note, but I mean, I don't, I don't expect to, to beat him. I think it'd be a miracle, you yeah? know, and I think sort of 11 to 4, whatever you're talking about, is, um, is far shorter than it should be. I would say 100 to 1 would be much more like it. I'm sure you would, but talking about miracles, um, you have what many people would call a miracle horse in Frankel, unbeaten, magnificent, We've all enjoyed him. Mm. How much have you enjoyed him? Yeah, he's been, he's been very interesting, really. Um, he used to be a bit free and everything, but he's growing up a lot. I think he's sort of far more sensible now, uh, more relaxed. I think he's a stronger horse. And I'd like to think he's, gonna, he, he's now a better horse, but um, this time they, you, know, you never know, do you? And, and you've always got to, you know, respect the opposition. We know he's a bit buzzy. Can you, can you explain to us when he first came to you and when you started to learn about him, what he did that, that made him a difficult horse to, to get a grip with? Well, he's got this extraordinarily long stride and, 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 he, and, he, and he, he was quite free, you know. He wanted to get on with it and he just was doing too much the whole time, you yeah? But gradually he's sort of, he's got better and better and better and now I think he's sort of, Touch wood, you know, he's, he's safe. Does that mean that when your work riders first got on, on him, he just, he just wanted to take off straight away? Well, he, he, he could pull, yeah, he could pull like anything, but he is, he, he's, as I said, he's growing up and um, 
can be more of a man, and he's far easier. Um, you know, at this stage, I'm very happy with him. You know, so we've got over two weeks to go, two and a half weeks to go, thing like that, and um, everything's going to plan. But I mean, you know, horses are things can go wrong. You know, you know, we've still got time to go with all my runners for Ascot, and it's horrific what the things that can go wrong. You know, with you, know, you can have a horse fine one day and pull the muscle the next, or chipped a knee, or I mean, so many little things. Or got a cold or a chill or a temperature or he spread his plate and pricked his foot or pricked his foot. I mean so many things can happen so I mean, you've just got to hope that I can get them there. I mean I should be doing my best to get them there really well and ready to run for their lives but um, we've just got to keep our fingers crossed and hope. But the reason you've been at the top of the game for so many years is because you you see these things and you have a knack of controlling a horse like Frankel. How, how, how then when you have a horse like that what do you do with him to try and make him into the beast that you want him to be? No, I mean, it, it's there. It's just get, getting him sort of educated and feeling one's way. And, you know, and then you've got to time these things. You, know, you, you, you want to go to Ascot 110% to win, not, not 95. Yeah? So you've just, got to, you know, you've just got to know the horse, hope that you understand him and, and give him the right amount of work and, and have him right on the day. You know, it, it's easy to give a horse a gallop too many or too, one, one too, too few. So that it's a sort of timing thing, really. He's a brilliant two-year-old, obviously. Brilliant in the 2000 Guineas, one of the most exciting mm. Guineas performances we've all seen. Fantastic in the, the Sussex Stakes. Of his performances so far, Sir Henry, which one has given you the most satisfaction? I think at Goodwood, really, because you know, although he had to lead, I mean, he was relaxed and everything. And uh, The other races didn't, um, this year, didn't give me I wasn't that satisfied, yeah. And was that really just the way they panned out? That I just wasn't satisfied with the, you know, the, quite the running of the races, wasn't it? Yeah. And you've said he's the best horse you've ever trained. Well, but I said potentially he could be, but he's got to go on proving it. And I think that um, when people the other day asked me, is he the best horse I've ever trained? I said, I mean, he could be, Brilliant, but I mean, he's he's got to prove it, and I think that um, rather than ask me the question, yeah, those people who fo follow racing carefully and uh, follow him, they want to watch him and decide for themselves whether he's the best they've ever seen or he's just another horse. You won the QE2 then with Chris in the 70s. Yeah. If Chris and Frankel were lining up tomorrow, who would you be backing to win? Well. It's difficult to say, really. It, um, I mean, Chris, Chris was a very, very good horse. I mean, he's probably one of the best milers since the war, yeah? Um, this horse is a bit, a bit more of a baby in a lot of ways, yeah? Uh, I think progressive. So that suggests that you think we haven't seen the best of him yet? No, but uh, and as I said before, you know, I mean, when we see the best of him, then you can, you can decide. Yeah? I still get people saying to me, oh, I wish he'd run in the Derby, or I wish he'd done that this season. I wish he'd taken on bigger fields over longer distances. Um, it all seems, though, that it's part of a master plan that you're sticking to the mile as a, as a three-year-old, but that hopefully means he does stay in training next mm. year and then can explore the racing programme perhaps a bit more. Well, I mean, he stays in training, you know, and he's, now, he's gradually growing up and everything, and I, mean, I try to do the right thing for him. A lot of people like to see him do a lot of things, yeah? but I mean, you know, we've got to think of the horse. Yeah? I mean, the horse comes before what people want. And I didn't think he was ready for the derby. You know? I mean, I wasn't happy that he was relaxed enough. And if he wasn't relaxed enough, he wasn't going to get the trip. And um, it could have been a disaster. <coughs> so I think it's plenty of time to, I mean, if he turns out to be a mile and a quarter horse, I mean, the derby is a mile and a half, I think. You know, the derby is usually won by a horse who actually who gets a mile and a half, you know, who stays. It's, just, it, you know, it's, a, it's a tough course, mm. Epsom, for going up that hill. If he hadn't settled properly, I mean, he might have come up against a brick wall a fell and a half out. So, I mean, I don't think he, I, I wanted to risk it. Does Sir Henry Cecil, though, ever lie in bed at night just, just thinking, oh, I wonder how he'd have whizzed down Epsom? No, no, no. 
never entered my mind. I mean, I didn't think he was ready for, to win the derby, and that was that. And coming back to, to how good he is, one always wonders as an outsider looking in, does, does Sir Henry Cecil go to Frankel's box every five minutes on the hour and just have a look at him and admire him? Or do you have to just treat him as another horse? How, how, how do you cope with having something so good, no, so close I mean, to you? <clears throat> I don't think he wants to see me too often. He, you know, he's quite a character. He's got sort of quite a lot of personality, which is very good. You know? Most good horses have, have personality. But I try not to bother him too much. Eh? Maybe you prefer to see Vita Nova then? No, I just... Um, you, know, you, you really treat him as anything else yeah, in the yard. I mean, they're all, all, you know, they're all... They're horses when we train them all. And I mean, it's obviously important when he gets out for a pick of grass at night that he's, it's quiet and nothing's going to frighten him. You know, you've always got those sort of worries that he's going to get loose or something like that, or there's going to be a sort of some vehicle Make, comes past, makes a hell of a noise, I think that, and it frightens him, and he gets loose. Yeah. So you always got to be wary. An annoying and, interviewer. You know, you've got to be very. Yeah, you've got to be very. You know, you be cautious. But I mean, they're all the same. They're all. They're all horses. We train them all, and we try and look after them all. Yeah. And other than just coercing his character the right way, ha have you had actually any problems with him this season at all? Has effectively he just been a case of getting him to the track each time? But it. Has he had no, any we had no, 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 no problems at all. Um, we just, no, he's been quite straightforward in that way. So we need to pick up 600,000 if he can win the QE2, which, as we've already discussed, is crucial for the Champions Trainer title. Is the, It must be hard for you to imagine defeat at this stage. Well, <clears throat> I'd, li I'd like to think um, you know, he's capable of winning it, but you know, no... no, no Horses are certainty in any race, and things can go wrong. And um, we have had this conversation before, Sir Henry, and we yeah. do know that some horses that you've trained in the past have been certainties. Well, I don't think there's anything such as a certainty, but I mean, hopefully, if we get him right, I mean, I, I'd be very disappointed if he doesn't win. But I mean, I've been disappointed many times in my life before. But the message at the moment, at least, is you still feel he's getting better. He's right, ready for this big test. And he's I, just as you'd like him. Yeah, I think he's got a great chance if I get him there as I want him. Um, and um, I wouldn't swap him, but I mean, it doesn't, that doesn't mean I'm going to win. If you could pick your ground for him, what conditions would you ask the good Lord to produce? I, I think he really minds. You know? I think that, um, I don't mind if he, you know, he, he did get a little bit soft. You know? I mean, you know, he's a Galileo, isn't he? I mean, mm. Um, Sad as Wells, he will go with a bit of given the ground. I mean, he won given the ground, he's won on the fast ground. I think he'll get away with whatever ground it is. So, Henry, you're taking every precaution that Frankel doesn't tear off in the lead by running his three parts brother bullet train as a pacemaker. Yes, I, mean, I, I don't really want to lead all the way, and um, hopefully, we're a decent pace and, and, and we don't need bullet train, but I mean. Um, bullet trains there to make sure it's a sensible pace for him, whatever the others do. And uh, he's a three parts brother. He's a very good lead horse. Uh, he, he leads him in all his work at home. Uh, he's a year older. He's, you know, he's not the same class, but I mean, he, you know, he's, he's a classic trial winner. And um, he will make sure that you know, they don't crawl around you. Know?